Hi, I'm Alan Bresnik, Cable Video Practice Leader for Light Reading. I'm here in Denver at SCT Cable Tech Expo with Steve Harris, who's Director of Advanced Network Technologies for SCTE, and we're going to be talking about Wi-Fi today. Steve, where do cable operators stand with their Wi-Fi deployments right now? Well, it depends on what we're talking about. So if we talk about the home, cable operators have been deploying 802.11b, G, and now N. So N's very popular. And this is a worldwide phenomenon. So this has been going on in Europe, definitely here in the United States and in Latin America. But right now we're gearing up to offer 802.11ac. So we're offering the newer technology. We also see in the home that the home is now changing from an Ethernet home network to a Wi-Fi home network. And that's been happening over the last few years. We're seeing pro a proliferation of Wi-Fi connected televisions and an explosion of Wi-Fi devices. We see cloud moving its way into the home and coupling with Wi-Fi, so we see cloud DVR services now that are very popular, and then storage in the cloud for the home. And if you talk about the uh, requirements, even Cable Labs has changed requirements to offer now 802.11ac. And we do see huge gains in hotspots, and this is globally. So not just in the United States, where we see one operator trying to push 8 million by the end of the year, and other operators that, um, pushing about a million. But that's going to continue to grow, and that's growing not just in U.S., but in Europe and in Latin America as well. And carrier-grade Wi-Fi is now in the forefront. And we're looking to manage the service and offer a better quality of service in the home. And then one last but not least, we're very concerned with video over Wi-Fi as we have a lot of HD services and moving to Ultra HD. So we want good quality of service here as well. Why is Wi-Fi such a big deal for MSOs right now? That's a great question, and there's a host of reasons it's a big deal. And one is the explosion of Wi-Fi devices. We're going to see the connected uh, televisions explode all the way out to 2020. We're going to see uh, Internet of Things growing. We're going to see uh, devices, untethered devices, smartphones and tablets growing from seven devices in the home today to up to a dozen devices. We see that customers spend a lot of money on cellular data plans, and they want to offload that to Wi-Fi. So this is very interesting to subscribers. And the other thing is our competitors are in this space. So whether it's unlicensed LTE or Wi-Fi first and this video everywhere, we have to adapt and we have to evolve to, to address this issue. And we are in the, in the position to enable Wi-Fi. We control the internet. So we are in the position to offer a good quality experience over Wi-Fi to our customers, whether it's cloud DVR or the connected TV or this TV everywhere, and even supporting the home network now as everybody wants to connect their devices together. And the perception of the customer's internet is that the cable operator is providing the Wi-Fi. So we need to own the ecosystem and we need to own the devices within the network and provide a good quality of experience. And we also see competitors looking at voice over Wi-Fi services. So we need to address issues of latency, jitter, and packet loss in the network and make sure that we have good quality of service that we would have in a cell phone network, more of a carrier grade experience. Steve, what are some of the biggest challenges that cable operators face in deploying Wi-Fi or in expanding their existing Wi-Fi deployments? Well, the biggest thing if we talk about the home is RF propagation in the home. We have a big challenge of getting those RF signals to a level where we have good quality of experience throughout the house. So we're trying to address that. Um, and the other thing is more education on the customer side. Customers are now wanting to stream four devices in the home with 1080p content. So we need to educate the customer what their service is and how they can use their service better. Other thing is understanding what devices we're installing. So we, we've heard other operators talk about what devices they're putting in, managed devices, and the capabilities and services these devices support. So we need to look at that and make sure we have a sense of these devices before we install. Quality of service is still a challenge for us. Yes, we have 802.11e, uh, wireless multimedia, but it does not address the user issue of quality of service. So we need to look at that, and there is work being done on that. With Hotspot 2.0 and Passpoint, there's still work there because we have to provide a seamless transition between the private SSID in the home to the public SSID on the outside. It's still a manual process, so we're going to address that as well. And these are some of the issues within cable labs. Another issue, we're moving bigger pipes with DOCSIS 3.1. We're moving to 100 megabit per second service. Well, with single input, single output antenna design on our access points, we will have a traffic prioritization issue. 
So we need to address that. That's another area. And unlicensed LTE wants to gobble up to our five gigahertz space. So we need to see what that looks like and how we can play fair with unlicensed LTE. Load balancing and community Wi-Fi needs to be addressed. Think about the customer who lives next to the park. Their house is a hotspot. There are going to be too many connections for that access point. So we need to load balance that and then cap the number of users per access point. And then the last but not least, probably one of the most important ones is better tools. The installers, uh, whether they're inside the home or outside in the field troubleshooting, they need better tools in their hand to troubleshoot these Wi-Fi problems faster. So given these challenges, how can cable operators optimize their wireless broadband networks? I'm going to start off by training. What we're seeing with operators and what we're seeing with vendors is understanding the technology. In some cases, we think that MIMO, multi-input, multi-output technology, is a solution for in the home. But if the home users only have single input, single output devices, it doesn't really offer a real solution. Also, recommended practices. Providing the same install each time, whether it's in the home or it's a hotspot experience, public or private user, we need a set of recommended practices. And SET is here to develop a set of recommended practices working group that will be launching in 2015. And then moving forward with your carrier Wi-Fi program, we need to continue uh, enriching the customer experience when it comes to Wi-Fi, so that's very, very important. Wi-Fi needs to operate just like cellular. And last but not least, improving hotspot density as we see the movement happening in the United States and all over the globe. We need denser hotspot deployments. And that's going to help us provide a better experience for Wi-Fi in the public space. How can MSOs monetize their Wi-Fi networks or is Wi-Fi doomed to be a lost leader for cable operators? The one hard thing for us is to start charging for a service that we've been offering for free. So I think there's four areas that, that could be opportunities for us. The first one is the analytical data. And this is where I go to a coffee shop, connect to a operator's, operator's hotspot, buy my coffee, leave the shop, and go home. Now I have that data of all the people that entered that coffee shop, and I can resell that data or package that data for that business. For instance, I'll give you another example. In Brazil, 30% of the users were using Wi-Fi during the soccer game. That's 72 thousand people and that is a ton of analytical data that we can use and analyze and communicate with these crowds of folks. Another area is a white glove service. What customer would not want their Wi-Fi to work at 100 percent and we can offer a white glove service on top of their current tier where we make sure that the Wi-Fi is of optimal quality of experience. Another popular service there's been a lot of buzz about is voice over Wi-Fi. And the, and the reason we need to be concerned and maybe an uh, area for us is that our competitors are going to get in this space. We see uh, uh, products like Apple getting into this space. So we should have some type of plan in this space. It could be an opportunity for us. And last but not least, maybe even a tiered service where I have an older technology of Wi-Fi. And how do I move to a newer technology of Wi-Fi? I can have a better tiered service. So if I'm a gamer or someone who consumes higher definition of video, say HD or Ultra HD, I could pay for a premium service. So let's talk Wi-Fi first. Do you see Wi-Fi first as a viable strategy for cable operators? Yeah, I would say yes, because mo many mobile users uh, are using Wi-Fi. And one of the larger cable operators has, has seen 70% of their subscriber data going over Wi-Fi. So there is definitely a business model here. It just makes sense for subscribers to use Wi-Fi in replacement of using cellular for data offloading and to save money. I also think there's some work to be done to improve RF propagation and growing the carrier Wi-Fi and improving the community Wi-Fi here as well. So this is all good news because we're working on these and it does make sense to move into a Wi-Fi first kind of uh, service. Steve, community Wi-Fi has been a big hit for Comcast and Cablevision as well as some European MSOs. Why do you think that is, and do you think other cable operators will follow their lead? So the technology is ripe. Uh, we've been doing a lot of testing and making sure that the technology is ready to go into the field. So a lot of the operators have been using their labs to make sure that this will be scalable. Folks in Europe are on board and forming partnerships with folks in the United States. So there's definitely interest globally. We also see activity in Latin America as well. Uh, having talked with these operators, they're highly interested in moving the direction of a Comcast and cable vision. However, monetizing Wi-Fi is still a concern here, as we heard that operators expressed this in the last few weeks on we have these 
hotspot networks, these community Wi-Fi networks, how do we leverage them and monetize them? And we've heard this from two of the big operators in the U.S. Thanks a lot, Steve. We look forward to hearing a lot more about Wi-Fi and what cable operators are trying to do with it at this convention and in this series of videos.